citizens, especially the next generation, you have to keep raising your voices because you deserve to live your lives in a world that is cleaner and that is healthier and that is sustainable. But that is not going to happen unless you are heard. It is in the nature of things, it is in the nature of the world, that those of us who start getting gray hair are a little set in our ways, that interests are entrenched. Not because people are bad people, it's just that's how we've been doing things. And we make investments, and companies start depending on certain uh, energy sources, and change is uncomfortable and difficult. And that's why it's so important for the next generation to be able to step in and say, no, it doesn't have to be this way. You have the power to imagine a new future in a way that some of the older folks all, don't always have. And the same is true when it comes to issues of democracy and human rights. There are times where, when we speak out on these issues, uh, we are told that democracy is just a Western value. I fundamentally disagree with that. Japan, <laughs> Japan, Taiwan, South Korea, they have built thriving democracies. Filipinos showed us the strength of people power. Indonesians just voted in a historic election. I just came from Burma. This is a place that for 40 years was under the, the grip of a military junta, one of the most closed and oppressive nations on earth. And there, I was inspired by citizens and civil society and parliamentarians who are now working to sustain a transition to a democratic future. I had a town hall meeting with young people like you, in which they were asking, what does it mean to create rule of law, and how should we deal with ethnic diversity in our city? You could feel the excitement. What, what does a free press look like, and how does it operate? And how do we make sure that journalism is responsible? And this incredible ferment and debate that's taking place those young people, they want the same things that you do. The notion that somehow they're less interested in opportunity or, or less interested in avoiding arbitrary arrest or, or less interested in being censored is fundamentally untrue. Today, people in Hong Kong are speaking out for their universal rights. And so here in Asia and around the world, America supports free and fair elections because citizens must be free to choose their own leaders, as in Thailand, where we are urging a quick return to inclusive civilian rule. We support freedom of assembly and freedom of speech and freedom of the press, a free and open internet, strong civil societies, because the voices of people must be heard and leaders must be held accountable even though it's uncomfortable sometimes. I promise you, if you lead a country, there are times where you are aggravated with people voicing opinions that s s seem to think you're doing something wrong. <laughs> and you'd prefer everybody just praise you. I understand. <laughs> but that's not how societies move forward. We support strong institutions and independent judiciaries and open government because the rule of force must give way to the rule of law. And in that same fashion, the United States will continue to stand up for the inherent dignity of every human being. When we talk about these issues of development, when we invest in the well-being of people on the other side of the globe, when we stand up for freedom, including occasionally having to engage in military actions, we don't do that just because we are charitable. We do that because we recognize that we are linked. 
And that if somebody, some child is stricken with a curable disease on the other side of the world, at some point that could have an impact on our child. We'll advance human dignity by standing up for the rights of minorities, because no one's equality should ever be denied. We will stand up for freedom of religion, the right of every person to practice their faith as they choose, because we are all children of God and we are all fallible. And the notion that we, as a majority, or the state, should tell somebody else what to believe with respect to their faith is against our basic values. We will stand up for our gay and lesbian fellow citizens because they need to be treated equally under the law. We will stand up for the rights and futures of our wives and daughters and partners because, you know, I believe that the best measure of whether a nation is going to be successful is whether they are tapping the talents of their women and treating them as full participants in politics and society and the economy. And we're going to continue to invest in the future of this region, and that means you, this region's youth, all of you, your optimism, your idealism, your hopes, I see it everywhere I go. I, I spend a lot of time with young people. I spend a lot of time with old people, too, but I prefer spending time with young people. <laughs> I meet them in Tokyo, in Seoul, in Manila, and Jakarta. It's the spirit of young men and women in Kuala Lumpur and Rangoon who are participating in our Young Southeast Asian Leaders Initiative. And like you, they're ready to lead. To the young woman with an idea who dreams of starting her own business, if, if she just had a network, if she just had the capital. America wants to be her partner because we believe in the entrepreneur that you can be, the innovations you can spark, and the jobs you can create. And when you succeed, we'll all be more prosperous. To the young man who's working late in a clinic tending to a patient who dreams not just of treating diseases but preventing them, if, if I just had the resources, if, if I just had the support, we want to be your partner. Because we believe in the advocate that you can be, and in the families you can reach, and the lives you can save. And when you succeed, our world will be better. To the young woman tired of the tensions in her community who dreams of helping her neighbors see beyond differences, if she could just start a dialogue, if, if, if she knew how others had walked the same path. Well, America wants to be your partner. Because we believe in the activist that you can be, and the empathy that you can build and the understanding you can foster between people. And when you succeed, our world will be a little more peaceful. And to the young man who believes his voice isn't being heard, who dreams of bringing people like him together across his country, if, if he just knew how to organize and mobilize them, we want to be your partner, because we believe in the leaders that you can be, in the difference you can make to ignite positive change. And when you succeed, the world will be a little more free. So that's the future we can build together. That's the commitment America's making in the Asia Pacific. It's a partnership not just with nations, but with people, with you, for decades to come, bound by the values we share, guided by the vision we see. I am absolutely confident we can advance the security and the prosperity and the dignity of people across this region. And in pursuit of that future, you will have no greater friend than the United States of America. So thank you very much. God bless Australia. God bless America. God bless our great alliance. Thank you.